So in this video here, we're going to talk about model testing, how we can do it, and also the step-by-step, -step, why you should do it, and also why it's important thing to do before we put our models into production, so we make sure that we have the best model running out there, solving problems. So first of all, after training, we want to evaluate our model and so on. We have different data sets, so we have like the split, so we have a train, validation, and also our test set. We basically have our training set, which we're going to train our model on. We have our validation set, evaluate, do model evaluation. We fine tune our high parameters and all that. Make sure we have the best model. Once we have our best model evaluated, a bunch of different high parameters, we're testing out different model variations. We can then take our test set, go in and do model testing on top of that to make sure that it generalizes well, that we can actually put our model into production. So this is the difference between model evaluation and also model testing. When we're doing model evaluation, we go in and look at different metrics, the mean error position and so on, all the F1 scores, precision recall and so on. But when we want to do model testing after the evaluation phase then we want to go in and apply it on act like use cases or like act like images so let's say that we have a pet store we want to classify or predict cats and dogs then we train a model on that we want to do model testing could be that we want to deploy this model into a specific store then we take some images from that store test that on our model to see if it generalizes well if we're actually like able to do predictions outside our controlled training and validation environment. So this is pretty much the difference between model testing and evaluation. And this is really important to know. So when we want to do preparation for model testing, first of all, we need to make sure that we have a sufficient size data set for our testing. Because again, if we don't have enough examples like images and so on for our testing, we might not be able to figure out all the edge cases or different environments that it doesn't work in. Could be the lighting conditions, could be the specific environments, could be the different types of cats and dogs and so on for a specific pet store. So it really depends and that is why we need a sufficient size data set. We also need to have a realistic representation because if we train our images on one specific store and we want to apply it to other stores, it might not generalize well. So we need to make sure that we have a realistic representation of the data set that we actually want before we put a model into production. This is the last thing that we want is to have a model that works good in our own development environment. And then once we put it out in the whole world, it doesn't really work because we don't have a realistic representation once we did our model, both model evaluation and also model testing. So when we test our computer vision models, run predictions, compare the predictions with each other, make sure that it acts like performs as you want and also compare with the ground truth data. You can set up and do evaluation. Again, when you do this, you can just use it in validation mode. You can do evaluation with autolytics. Then we want to go in and calculate the performance metrics. So the accuracy, precision recall, if one score and so on for our test set and also visualize the results. Like one of the best ways to make sure and also test your AI machine learning model is act like to run predictions on it, visualize the results, be able to see it with your own eyes. Does the model perform good? Because again, could be that the scores are perfectly fine. They're performing good and so on, but you miss some edge cases. Could be edge cases that your performance metrics doesn't take into account and you will only be able to see those visually. We need to go in and make sure that we analyze like misclassified images, error analysis, and also bias and fairness. So it could be that there's any bias in model predictions for a specific type of cat or a specific type of dog. So that's really important that we test that case as well. So when you're testing your model with Ultralytics, if you're using YOLV10 model or whatever YOLV model supported with Ultralytics, you can basically just run it in validation mode on your specific data set. You will get pretty much just like a whole overview over how your model is performing and also how it does on the validation set. But also just take your model, throw it through some images and see how it works. You can either use it for like a fine-tuned model or also a pre-trained model and we need to do model testing in both cases. One of the things when we actually like do custom fine tuning and so on, on our own specific data set, we need to make sure that we're not underfitting or overfitting because if we take a base model fine tuning on our own data set and we just have a very specific data set, we might train it and overfit to that specific data set so our model doesn't really generalize well, which means that if you only train it on one specific pet store, it might not be able to generalize well and apply to multiple different pet stores. To prevent that, we can either like train it for less or we can have multiple pet stores, combine some images from pretty much multiple pet stores in the same data set and it will start to generalize well. 
So if you just have one specific example, it's not going to generalize, but once you start to get two, three, four, five different examples from different environments, the model will start to learn from that and generalize. We don't want underfitting as well because then our model is basically not, not learning enough. So this is very important as well. Could be data leakage. Once you put your model out there, the data might be different. You have, might have like data drift as well. So it might not be the exact same data, the exact same environment, lighting conditions and so on. Once you want to run your model in production compared to in your testing environment. So this is one of the most frequent problems when you actually like have a good model. You can see it in the Jupyter Notebook. It's very good, but you put it out in the real world and it doesn't really work that good. Could also be over time that you have data change or like data shift. So we need to make sure that we're testing for that as well. So after we're done with our model testing, we can take our model, put it into production, make sure that we actually like optimize it for a specific framework and also the specific hardware that we are running our models on. So this is all for model testing. Make sure that you do it. It is really important. If you're not doing it, know each individual step and so on. And also why it's so important. You run into a lot of problems once you want to take your models and apply them into the real world. So I hope you learned a ton throughout this video here. Definitely check out the other videos that we have on the channel, pretty much covering everything that you need in the computer vision pipeline. And then I'll just see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.